Marissa Rex, and welcome to ElementarySchoolCounseling.org's video podcast. This is our first video podcast, and it's called Feelings and Food. I like to use this activity individually and in small groups, um, but it can be done in a classroom setting. I choose individual and small groups most often because it's easier to manage when you're dealing with something like food. Um, today I'm going to be using some cashews, but I wouldn't use that in my regular school counseling practice just because of all the nut allergies that students have. Um, and I try to keep my office a place where anybody can go and a lot of times that'll s stick in the room or get on the surfaces. And um, even if you clean it, it just it's, it makes me feel better if I don't have them in my room. Um, so, but I'm using cashews today because it's spring break, kind of lazy, don't feel like going to the store, so I'm going to use whatever I have in my um, house. All right, so what I usually do is after the students have washed their hands, of course, I give them a pile of, of some type of snack. And a lot of times I use pretzels. Um, those are pretty easy, and most kids like pretzels. Um, and once they get their um, little pile of snack, I begin to talk about the different kinds of feelings that we have. And I talk about it in terms of the four main feelings, which are happy, sad, mad, and then scared or surprised. Those are the ones that I use. And so we'll start with happy. That's usually the easiest one for students to do. And so I have them, with their snack, create what happy looks like to them. A lot of students will make a happy face, but they might create something else that feels happy to them. And so after all the students make their pictures, um, we talk about it. So we'll look at each other's, you know, snack picture and um, you know, point out the similarities and the differences if we're doing it in a group and if it's one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I'm doing my own with them um, and we talk about it like that. Most times I will take a picture so that way I can print it off and they can use it in their classroom. Uh, I use this especially with students who have a hard time expressing themselves and so maybe rather than using words they can show their picture, especially if they're angry or something that they don't know how to vocalize and so they can just show the picture of how they're feeling. Um, that can work that way too. So I'll show you what my happy face looks like. I know, pretty great, huh? <laughs> Very artistic, I think. Um, I should become a professional artist, not a professional school counselor, right? <laughs> and then we, you know, go on to the sad. Some students will add a little bit, maybe make um, tears coming down, if it's a face, different things. And then, you know, we'll go into mad. And then finally, having some type of um, scared or surprised face. It's a little harder to do. This one I think is my best yet. Um, not really, you can't even tell that it's really a face, but it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of students, when you ask them to do different artistic um, activities, like drawing or sculpting something, they a lot of times will say, well, I don't know how to do that. Can you show me how to do that? Um, and I always let them know that there is no right or wrong answer, especially when it comes to art and expressing yourself. Um, sometimes I'll have students even do, um, like what their calm face looks like, um, because sometimes they consider that an emotion. It's not quite happy, and it's not quite sad or mad or scared or surprised. It's just something in the middle where they feel relaxed, but nothing um, too ex extreme in any of the other directions. And so we'll do that as well, and I'll show you what mine looks like. It's kind of close to happy. Well, and then once they're done, I usually have my students, we can eat and talk and, and do it um, kind of in a social, friendly, building rapport kind of way, um, especially if it's a group. Um, sometimes even, it's really hard to find time for small groups, um, especially with how, I know at least in Ohio and I'm, I know across the country, we have um, so many pressures on our students to do well in standardized assessments and to really keep to the curriculum. So we don't have a lot of opportunities as school counselors to pull students as much as maybe we'd like to. Um, and so one of the things I even started doing was we have a, a morning um, healthy snack that they're allowed to have. And so sometimes I'll pull students during that. It's a 15 minute chunk of time, but it's a reward. So if they have good behavior for the week or 
you know, something, whatever our criteria is, um, they get to come with me. Thank you so much for listening to elementaryschoolcounseling.org's first video podcast. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too.